You never know where you're going to find me. Today it's the California wine country and I'm visiting Dry Creek Valley in Sonoma and harvesting one of my favorite ingredients from a tree that's more than a century old. Just look at this gorgeous fruit. Today's show is all about celebrating the season, wine country style with figs. In my kitchen, we'll make spice pen forte bursting with dried figs. We'll visit a winery garden with friends and make a salad with forged greens, dried figs, and Marcona almonds. We'll also create a beautiful board with local cheeses, prosciutto wrapped figs, vermouth figs, and a fresh fig spread, perfect for entertaining. Mm. Yum, so good. I love to travel the globe in search of new food and wine discoveries. For me, it's about more than returning home with a handful of new recipes. It's about taking the spirit of Austria, of Italy, of Greece, and of the Danube River and injecting some of their magic into our everyday lives. Food has a unique ability to transport us. Join me as we discover new plates and places on our culinary journey together. Joanne Weir's Plates and Places is brought to you by... With AMA Waterways, guests can climb, pedal, and journey beyond the beaten path while cruising on storied rivers across Europe. You can find out more at amawaterways.com. Our winemaking is the result of teamwork and patience. Working together, we dedicate our best efforts with every vine, grape, and bottle. Washington Vintners. Since 1899, my family has shared our passion for everything that goes into our Mutti 100% Italian tomatoes. Only tomatoes. Only Mutti. Start something delicious. California Figs from Valley Fig Growers. Today we're visiting Dry Creek Valley in Sonoma County, California. It's a beautiful morning to explore and taste the bounty of the wine country. And what better place to meet some food-loving friends and share some recipes. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, how Hello. are you all? Thank you for coming up here. How about a glass of wine? Yeah. How about some uh, Kibera <laughs> Rosé? 2018, a specialty of ours. This is all uh, grapes grown on our property, farmed organically. Cheers, cheers. everybody, yes. cheers, cheers, yes. cheers, cheers. After enjoying a glass of rosé poured by the winemaker and having a little something to eat, we'll meet up with the vineyard manager to hear about what's growing on the vines and in the garden. Big focus on, on flowers this year yeah. and, and beauty. Um, so we definitely are growing produce for special events like your visit um, and for taste room visitors. Um, but really this is a place where, you know, people while they're here um, to kind of come out, walk around, right. relax, take in the countryside. Okay. Beautiful dino kale. I know that, yeah, that mm -hmm. very, yes. th this site does really well with um, those greens, all the kale, collard. Um, broccoli is a little more difficult, but then also, um, Potatoes and onions in particular. Potatoes are really good from here. Oh, so I don't know if you've yeah. gotten on any of those, but we do have yeah. some really? in, in um, storage here. Really I good. love the dinosaur kale in Ribolita. You know the soup that comes from Tuscany? It means reboiled um, because they cook it and then they boil it again. But with black cabbage, it's delicious. Cavolo nero. So would they put the cabbage in in the second? pass or no it's actually in the beginning really okay oh they love to just cook it to death <laughs> <laughs> on the garden tour ned took us to taste the fruit of an extraordinary old fig tree oh there's some yeah those those will be really nice and sweet right there okay here two more slightly dehydrated this is how you want them Here's one. Oh, and it's gonna match what you're wearing. It's perfect. Who didn't get one? Okay. Oh, aren't those amazing? The first time I had one like this, I was in France and I had never had a fig that was like this. 
Thank you. You're welcome. You guys? Okay. Anybody else want to go up the ladder? See the things I do for you? <laughs> I love watching the expression on my friends' faces as they bite into a fig picked fresh off the tree. Fresh figs, picked very ripe, are deliciously sweet and sensuous. I'm heating up a little bit of honey and adding some sugar to it. And then stir that together. I'm really just cooking this until the sugar melts. Pan forte just means strong bread. I know that sounds kind of weird because I'm making a dessert, but it's strong because I'm adding tons of spices to the nuts. I have two different kinds of nuts. I've got some hazelnuts, which are already peeled, which is so great. Right now you can buy hazelnuts peeled and uh, some almonds. Okay, strong bread. That's what pan forte means. So it's because all of these spices are quite pungent. And what I have is some cinnamon, coriander, nutmeg, cloves, and allspice. That's a lot of spices, as well as a little bit of white pepper. Now with pen forte, it's kind of sweet and hot. You could use black pepper if you want. Oh, that's a good amount. So about a quarter teaspoon. And then I'm also adding a little bit of flour. Just stir this together. It smells so good. You know, this is a dessert you can make year round, but of course it's great during the holidays. Now I'm adding some chopped figs. These are just calamirna figs, just diced. One of the best ways to do that because they can stick is just to put your figs in the freezer and then chop them when they're frozen. Great trick. Oh yes, the sugar has completely melted. You can just check that. Oh, for sure. Very sticky. And you're just going to add that to the mixture. I mean, it's so easy to make this. And then just stir it together. And this kind of looks like it's not going to go together and you're not going to be able to get all of the dry ingredients mixed in, but you will just be patient and keep stirring. Just make sure that your flour is completely mixed in. Now you want to prepare the pan. So just butter an eight inch cake pan. And now with a pencil, you can just trace around the outside. And then with some scissors, you can cut it out. And then place that in the bottom. And then you take your mixture. Don't let it get too cold because it's going to get really stiff. So I have a little bit of water and I'm just going to wet my hands so it doesn't stick to the pan forte. So you can just Keep wetting your hands, not too much water, just a little bit, but you press it now into your pan and you wanna make it nice and even. This is going into a 350 degree oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. I'm so fortunate to live in a part of the world where the growing season is nearly year round and there's nothing I like better than to go to the farmer's market and forage for whatever is seasonal and fresh right now. But come on, how great is this? We're composing our salad by foraging from this amazing garden and nothing could be fresher.
So you can take a knife and just run it around the edge. You want to make sure that you can remove it from the pan. Let's see. Yes, yeah, see, it turns in the pan so we know that it'll come out. And take your cake stand, turn it over right on top. Yes. <gasps> Ooh. Okay, but you need to remove the parchment. And then a little bit of confectioner's sugar. It's gonna look just like Italy now. A nice good dusting of confectioners. I'm using a serrated knife for this. You gotta use a little bit of strength to cut it. Beautiful. Well, this is always the best part. Let's see how I did. Mm. It's so good. You taste the spices, the toasted hazelnuts and the toasted almonds and then the dried fruit, the figs are fabulous. But you know what's funny? I was thinking about how hard it is to cut it. Forte, pan forte, strong. You gotta be strong to cut this. I know. Wow. We did a very good job out there in we the did. garden. Yeah. Check out these greens, they're so beautiful. I thought it would be fun if we make a salad with the pomegranates. Yeah. So just cut it and I cut it. And then what you do is you put it in water and you take the seeds out in water. And what happens is the seeds fall to the bottom and the skins go to the top. Okay, there's your job. <laughs> you thought I was gonna do it, didn't you? There, and you can both work if you want to. All right, shallots are delicious in a vinaigrette. What I do is I cut off the top and then cut this in half. I think a small knife is good for this. And you can see that I kept the root end intact. And I'm cutting towards the root end in a few parallel cuts like this. And I want to finely mince these shallots. I think probably one half shallot is going to be enough. Then I come back and I cut towards the tip. And then I change and I use a bigger knife and just mince the shallots. And I think that's going to be a good amount. All right, now here's my little chick and I love this and it really works well, is I take a little bit of vinegar and just pouring it over the shallots. And if you let that sit for about five or 10 minutes, what it does is it tempers the acidity and kind of mellows it out a little bit. I also like to add a little pinch of salt and I'm using kosher salt for this. Wow, you did a great <laughs> job. Wow, we now have about a whole case of pomegranates, about 500 out there. We're ready. So go to town. But we can put the tops, see you can take those just right off the top. I love this because if you have to do a lot of pomegranates, it's a really great way. What you can do is just to remove those, yeah, with a slotted spoon. That's great. Really, really great, thank you. All right, now that this has been sitting for about five or 10 minutes, what we're gonna do is add some really nice Sonoma extra virgin olive oil. Okay, who wants to do the honors? Brazil? Okay, so add a little bit and I'll scream at you when okay. you have enough. <laughs> that's good, that's good, that's good. Thank you. All right, I'm giving you all a leaf. Hard in my hands, but they're clean. Mm -hmm. This is the best way to test and see if it has enough salt in it. Mm. And you kind of taste that shallot. Yeah, it's nice, delicious. isn't it? Mm. 
There you go. What do you think? A little more vinegar? A little more vinegar. A little splash? Okay. Mm -hmm. Were you not going to tell me? <laughs> <laughs> I always add a little bit of extra vinegar and a little bit of extra salt because what happens is you've got all these greens and it tends to temper the acidity and the saltiness of a dressing. So a little bit more salt. We'll whisk that. And I always do the same thing. I look at this and I go, oh, is that enough? But I'm sure we'll be okay. Okay, so I have some Marcona almonds, really wonderful almond, but they have such distinctive flavor and also look to them. And I also have some dried figs. These are mission figs and I just cut them in half from top to bottom. You could also slice them if you want. That will give a nice sweetness. And this, these are some calamirna and di I did the same thing. So calamirna figs, those are really beautiful. All right. So I'm gonna take the dressing. I wanna get all of those nice shallots. I'm kind of excited about this salad and I'm so happy that you were here to go out and forage with me. I'm gonna put a few more of the almonds right on the top and these beautiful pomegranates. Do you wanna do the? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Pomegranates, just it gives that nice crunch, but also beautiful color. And now you get to do nasturtiums. The nasturtiums are wonderful because they're kind of peppery. You can even put the whole flowers right on the top. I feel like I'm at Chez Panisse. I know. It's <laughs> really beautiful. <gasps> Well, what do you think? Do you think we finished? Cheese. <laughs> Last thing. So this cheese, Valdion, is wonderful. It's just delicious. So I'm just taking some little pieces of the Valdion. You could also use Cabrales. That's another cheese that comes from Spain, and it's really excellent. All right, our salad is ready for the table. I thought what would be really nice with these beautiful figs is to make a little bit of a fig spread. And I'm going to use some butter that I've already melted, unsalted butter, and then a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And I want to add some garlic to it. So figs and garlic sounds really weird, but it's delicious together because you're going to see with rosemary, I love the combination. Don't let the garlic take on any color at all. So. I'm just going to warm that, and I want it to still be really nice and soft. Now I'm adding the figs right away. You can see I have some beautiful mission figs. These are, mission figs are the ones that are dark on the outside, red on the inside. I'll tell you that garlic already smells delicious. You always need a little pinch of salt. You know, it brings out the flavor. So just a little pinch of salt, not too much. I'm using kosher salt. This will take about three or four minutes until the figs start to fall apart, get really nice and soft. This mixture is perfect. You can see that some of the figs, the ones that are riper, are definitely softer. And then the ones that are firmer, they still have some more texture, which is really great. That's what I'm looking for. And now I'm adding a little bit of rosemary. Remember that a little bit of rosemary goes a long way. Just a little bit finely minced. And I'm adding some walnuts. And a little bit of balsamic, but this is an aged balsamic. So it's gonna give some nice sweetness. You can turn the heat off and just stir that together. Oh, the rosemary smells so good. And then with the sweetness of that balsamic, it's gonna be delicious. I'm gonna let this cool. All right, we're gonna make some vermouth figs and I wanna know who likes dessert here. 
With alcohol. Well, with <laughs> alcohol, she said. But I've already started. They soak the figs in cold water for 24 hours. And then I put them in this pan, just cover them with water, bring it up to a boil, and then simmer those for 15 minutes. I have some little pieces of lemon in there, so to kind of flavor it a little bit. We'll add some sugar to this. I'm gonna let you do the honors. Pour some sugar on it? Yes. Thank you. All right, we're putting that back on the heat and then I'll simmer that for two minutes. The sugar will dissolve and it will kind of thicken just a little bit. In the meantime, you get a job. I have an orange that I, that I want you to zest. Okay. It's faster. See how it's got there over there? If you put the tip down, and when you zest, you want to make sure you just zest the colored part. See, I'm right. always the teacher. <laughs> you don't want the bitter white part. Exactly. You don't want the pith. I use two kinds of figs. I use both the Mission figs and I also use the Calamarina. So I use both and I think they'll add great flavor. What I did was I just took off the stems. That's the only thing. So pretty simple. All right, so what you can also do, it's going to be your job, Renee. Ready. Here you go. You're gonna add two tablespoons of honey to that mascarpone. And then we'll also add the orange zest. I like that. Wow, you like honey, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah, so that's gonna be the garnish for the figs. What I'm looking for is, I want that mixture to get a little bit thicker. The sugar's gonna do that a little bit, but so is the evaporation. So I have vermouth. Do you like vermouth? Anybody here a vermouth fan? Mm -hmm. Love a vermouth. It's so good. So let's just add a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> so vermouth, it's made from wine, and they add botanicals to it, like roots, bark, herbs. Oh, it smells so good already. Spices. Um, you can really smell that. Can you smell it? Yeah. Smell. yeah? <laughs> it smells good. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is bring that, oh, I love that smell. I love vermouth mm -hmm. so much. Vermouth before dinner with a little ice cube, mm -hmm. it's great. I mean, a big glass, no. <laughs> now that the figs have cooled, I'm going to put them in this bowl. And it smells really good. And now we'll compose our cheese and fig board. What do you think? Gorgeous. I was thinking, you know, to have a cheese board, but to really play it up in kind of California wine country. What I have here is some Membrio, um, which I love. Quince paste is so delicious. And then I have three different cheeses. They're all from California. The cow's milk cheese, this is a sheep's milk cheese, and this is a goat cheese. So I tried different ones, different textures, different flavors. Of course, we have some figs. And so I wrapped some with prosciutto because I love that kind of sweet and salt. But then I made this too, which is really fun. This is made with fresh figs and it's kind of fun to put it on the crostini. Well, cheers. cheers. <laughs> so, but there's more, there's oh, more. There's more. <laughs> yes. Okay, check this out. I love this, it's pen forte. And I know most times they do it with dried fruit. I did it with it just bursting with figs, dried figs. Are you ready for some salad? When you have the freshest ingredients and you're cooking with friends, no matter where you are, there's nothing better. Cheers. 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 
You can visit our website to find and print selected recipes, get information about each episode, learn more about Joanne and the show, see behind the scenes photos, provide email feedback and more. It's all at joanneweir.com forward slash plates dash places. Joanne Weir's Plates and Places is brought to you by... With AMA Waterways, guests can climb, pedal, and journey beyond the beaten path while cruising on storied rivers across Europe. You can find out more at amawaterways.com. Our winemaking is the result of teamwork and patience. Working together, we dedicate our best efforts with every vine, grape, and bottle. Washington Vintners. Since 1899, my family shared our passion for everything that goes into our Mutti 100% Italian tomatoes. Only tomatoes. Only Mutti. Start something delicious. California figs from Valley Fig Growers. 